everybody. Welcome to my video on how to code a shopping cart using only vanilla JavaScript. On the right here, we have the final project of what we're going to code in this video. We have these items that we have a button to add them to our cart. And down here we have our cart. So if we click add to cart, it'll add an item to our cart and update the total price. Increasing this quantity will also increase the price. Decreasing it will decrease the price. And removing it will allow us to remove the item from the cart we try to add an item to the cart multiple times, it'll tell us that we've already added this item to our cart, so we can't do it again. And then if we click purchase down here, it'll tell us thank you for the purchase, and then remove all the items from our cart, simulating a purchase. So if you guys are just joining in on this video, all of the code for creating the styles for this page, as well as the HTML, can be found in videos linked in the description or in the info cards in the corner. So let's get started with actually coding up what we have here by opening up our store.html page over here with live server to see what we have started to get working with. So over here you see we have the shopping cart items as well as we have some items just templated into our shop for now, but none of these buttons actually do anything and changing these quantities doesn't update our total down here. So we need to get started coding this with JavaScript. In order to do this, we need to create a new file in our project and we'll just call it store.js, which stands for a JavaScript file, so the .js extension tells us that this is going to be a file with JavaScript in it. Then, in order to include that file inside of our store.html, we need to go into our head and include a script tag here and give it a source attribute, and this source attribute works exactly the same as href attributes for path or URL we add to it. So we just say the path to our store.js file here, and then we end this tag, and we do need an ending tag in our script tag unlike the link tag, which is self-closing, and that's because you can actually put JavaScript inside of the script tags, but it's always suggested to use a JavaScript file as opposed to JavaScript inside of a script tag, similar to using a style element as opposed to an external CSS style sheet. So now if we save that, our styles from or our JavaScript from our store.js is now being loaded into our page, but it's not actually doing anything because our file is empty. In order to see these changes, we can use console.log which will write anything that we put inside of here into the console of our web browser. So if we just put here, save that, and then over in our browser, if we right click and click on inspect, we can now view the console. So in here you see it, we wrote here to the console, which means that we are actually running all of the JavaScript inside of our store.js. We can change this to here too, save it, and now you see here too is outputted to the console. Now before we get started, I do wanna make a note that in our store.html, we're loading our script tag inside of the head of our HTML. And this means that our script tag will load before all of the content inside of our body. In general, things inside of the head will load in the background while the body of your page is being loaded. But script tags are different in that while a script tag is being loaded, nothing else on the page can continue loading. In order to get around this and make our script tag load in the background, we need to add the async attribute here which tells our browser in order to download this store.js page in the background and continue downloading the actual body of our HTML page at the same time. Now let's jump into our store.js page and start coding up the actual interactivity for our website. So inside of here, the very first thing that we're going to want to do is make these remove buttons here actually remove our item from our cart. So the first thing we need to do is we need to select these remove buttons and then add an event to them to say when this is clicked, do something. So inside of our store.html, if we scroll down to the section for our cart right here, you see that we have this button danger class applied to all of our buttons. So we want to select all of the buttons in our document that have this button danger class. In order to do that, we're going to use the document object, which is an object that JavaScript gives to your page that essentially says this document object is everything inside of your HTML. It has a bunch of methods on it for querying the different objects on your page, as well as adding new objects to your page. So we use this document object, and we're going to call the method on it, which will allow us to query elements based on classes. So we're gonna say get elements by class name, and all we do inside of here is we pass the class name we want to query for. So in our case, this is button danger. And this method right here is going to return all of the different elements on our page that have the class button danger. And we're just going to save that to a variable. And we'll say that these are the remove cart item buttons. So now 
this variable, remove cart item buttons, stores all of the different buttons with this exact class on it. In order to see that, we can log this variable right here to the console. And if you save that, we see that we now have inside of this array, two different buttons. And if I highlight over them, you see that they get highlighted inside of the actual browser. You see the top one is highlighted and the bottom one is highlighted here, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now what we need to do is we need to add the exact event listeners to these in order to do something when we click on them. To do this, we need to loop through these different objects. So we're going to use a for loop. We'll say for variable i equals zero. So starting at zero, while i is going to be less than the length of the number of buttons we have. So while i is less than the length of the buttons we have, and then we'll add one to i every single time instead of our loop. So essentially all this code is saying is loop through all of the different buttons inside of our cart. We'll create a variable here that will be the actual button. So we'll just call it button. We'll set it equal to whichever element in the loop that we are in because I will constantly be having one added to it each time we go through this array. So we're going to select the ith element of this array, set it to this button element here. So now we can use button. And since this button corresponds to one of our remove buttons over on the right here, all we have to do is say button dot add event listener. And this is how we add a listener to tell us when we click on a button, do something. So in our case, we're going to listen for the click event. And when the click event happens, we want to run some code. So we'll create a function for that. And for now, we're just going to log to the console and we'll just say clicked. And if we save that, there we go, clicked. Now when we click on a button, you'll see that in the console, it logs that we clicked. And every time we click on it, it'll log that and it'll do it for both of our buttons. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now all we need to do is make it so that this function will actually remove the cart item from our cart. In order to do that, we need to take our function here and this event listener always returns an event object inside of the function that it calls. And this event object has a property on it called target. So we can say event.target and this target is essentially whatever button we clicked on. So we'll just use our variable here and we'll say button clicked is going to equal that. So the button that we click is this event.target. And what we want to do is we want to get the cart row that buttons inside. So if we go to our store here, we have our button object here. The parent of it is this object. And then the parent of that object is the entire row, which is what we want to remove from our cart. So inside of here, we're going to use button clicked. And we want to get the parent element, which is going to be this div right here, that cart quantity div. And then we want to get the parent of that in order to get the entire cart row. So we say dot parent element again. And this is going to be the cart row that we want to completely remove. So we'll just use the remove function. There we go. And if we save that, now when we click on this remove button, it'll completely remove that item from the cart. And there you go. You see it's completely removed that item from the cart. And if we click this one, it'll do the same thing. But you'll notice our total here is not actually being updated. So we need to write some code in order to update the total of our cart every time we remove an item from it. In order to update the total of our cart, let's create a brand new function down here. And we're just going to call it update cart total. There we go. And we can just call this function inside of our event listener for our button. So we can say update cart total. And now this will run all the code inside of this function when it's called. So what we want to do in this update cart total function is we want to go through every single row in our cart. We want to find the price and we want to multiply that by the quantity and then add that together for every single one of our rows and display it down here in our total. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to get all of our cart rows. And if we look over in our store.html, you'll see that all of our cart rows are inside of this cart items and they all have this cart row class. So what we can do here is we can say we want to get our cart item container and this will be equal to the document dot get element by class name like I said and we want to get the elements that have the class name of cart item cart items sorry because that right here is what wraps all of the rows inside of our cart but we 
only want to get the very first one of this cart items because this get elements by class name returns an array of elements and we only want one. So we're just going to select the very first element inside of that array as our cart item container. And then inside of that cart item container, we wanted to use the same method of getting the elements by class name. And we want to get all the different cart row elements. So the elements that have the class cart row that are inside of this cart item container. Using this get elements by class name method on an actual object will only get the elements inside of that object that have this different class. So then we can just set that to a variable. We'll just say that this is our cart rows. And now all we need to do is loop over all these different cart rows very similarly to how we looped over all the buttons up here. So I'll just copy this code, paste it down here, and change this to be cart rows since we want to loop over our cart rows. And then we'll just say create another variable here that'll be our cart row and we'll set that equal to whichever item we are inside of this array. So whichever row that we're currently on inside of this array is what this cart row item will be. And then all we need to do is get the price and the quantity for the row of this cart. So if we go back to our store.html, you can see that our cart price is inside of this object with the class of cart price. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another variable. We'll call this one the price element, and we'll set that equal to the cart row. And we're going to get element by class name again. And we want to use cart price here in order to get that element that contains the cart price. And we just want the very first one again, just like we used with the cart items. And now we need to do the very next thing with the quantity. And the quantity in here is this input element with the class of cart quantity input. So we're going to do the very same thing to get a quantity element. We're going to get it from the cart row where the element has the class name of cart quantity input. And again, we only want the very first one. So we'll just use that. And now we have our price element and our quantity element. And if we log these out to the console, so we have price element and quantity element, if we save that, and now when we remove an element, it'll tell us, oh, here's our span for our price right here. And here's the input. And if we hover over them, you'll see that it has returned all of the different price elements and quantity elements inside of the row, which is exactly what we want. So now all we need to do is get the actual information from these elements, because currently we have the element and not the information inside of it. So what we want to do is we want to get the price from the price element. So we'll say price, and we're going to set that equal to the price element. And what we want to do is get the inner text from that element. The inner text We'll just get whatever text is inside of that element. So what we can do here is we'll do another log to see what this is actually returning. And when we click this remove button, you'll see that it's returning this 999, which is the text inside of this price column, which is exactly what we want. But you'll notice this 999 has a dollar sign in the beginning, and we want this to be a number without the dollar sign. So what we need to do is we need to just do replace on this and we want to replace all of the dollar signs inside of this string, and we want to replace them with absolutely nothing. So this will just completely remove the dollar sign from our string. And then since we want this to be a number and not a string, we need to use the parse float method, which will turn any string into a float, which is essentially a number with decimal points after it. There we go. And now if we save that and do this remove again, you'll see we now have 999 as a number without the dollar sign, which is exactly what we need in order to do math on this number. The last step is to get the quantity from our quantity element. So we're going to say quantity equals the quantity element. And we want to get the value of the quantity element. Since this is an input element right here, you need to get the value property of it and not the inner text because inputs do not have any text inside them. They have a value. So we want to get the value here, which is going to correspond with this quantity number. And now we can just say price times quantity, and we can log that. So now if we click remove here, you see we get 1998, which is this price times this quantity. And that's perfect. Now the very last thing we have to do is set this value to whatever we get for the price and quantity. And since this is inside of a loop, we need to total all of these together. So before our loop, let's create a variable. We'll call it total. 
And we're just going to set this to zero to start with. And then we want to add, so total is going to equal total plus the price times the quantity. And it'll do that every time it goes through the loop, it'll add the previous total to the price times quantity of that row to give us the new total. And then after our loop at the very end here, we want to actually get the element with the cart total price. So if we go over to our store here, you'll see that we have this cart total price class, which is where this price comes from. So we'll just do document dot get elements by class name, give it that class cart total price. Again, we only want the very first one. And then what we want to do is we want to set the inner text of this element. So we do inner text and we're going to set it equal to the total. And now if we save that and we click remove, you'll see that our total is updated to the actual quantity times price of everything inside of here, but you'll notice there's no dollar sign. So what we can do in here is we can use the dollar sign and then combine that with our total. And now if we save that and remove, you'll see that now our total updates and is displayed correctly with the dollar sign in front of it. Now, before we go further with actually creating the rest of our buttons, I do want to make note of one thing that is particular with JavaScript that we need to make sure of before we actually start trying to access the different elements on our page. We need to make sure that our page is done loading. If you remember when we added this script tag, we added this async method here, which tells it that it will load in the background while the body of our element is loading. But if the body of our page loads after the JavaScript loads, our JavaScript will run here, but there's no body for it to run off of, which means it won't be able to find any of these different elements since they haven't been generated yet. So in order to check to see if the page is done loading, we need to go to the very top of our JavaScript file here, and we need to add an if statement to check to see if the document, and we're gonna check the ready state to see if it is still loading. So if the document is still loading, which is what this if statement is saying, what we want to do is we want to add an event listener to our document, very similarly to how we added an event listener to our button. And we want to listen for the event DOM content loaded. And you have to make sure that you have the capitalization correct for all of these different letters in order for this to work. And this event will fire as soon as the page is done loading. So inside of here, we just want to run a function and we'll just call that function ready. And then if our page is already loaded, so if the page is loading, it'll run the code in here. But if it's not loading, so if it's already done loading, we just want to run that ready function no matter what. And then we can create that function. We'll call it ready here. And inside of this function, we'll do all of the code for hooking up our buttons right here. And that way, our code for hooking up the buttons will automatically work even if the page isn't already loaded. Because it'll just wait for this event of the DOM content loaded before it actually calls the ready function. So now we know everything inside of here, the page is already loaded when the code gets to this point. Another thing we can do is we can clean up our code a little bit by creating a function. And we'll just call this function here, we'll call it remove cart item. And this function will take all of the code that is inside of our event listener here for removing a cart button. We'll add the event object in here. And inside of our click right here, we'll just put remove cart item. So now instead of having all the code for our function inside of the event listener here, we're able to move it out here. So it's easier to tell what's going on in our code and easier to read. And if we reload the page, you'll see that everything still works as before. The next thing that we can work on is making it so that when we change the value inside of the quantity here, that it will actually update our total because as you see, if I increase this number, our total stays the same. And we can also input numbers below, z below zero, which we do not want to be able to do because we don't want someone to order negative 14 t-shirts. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something very similar to what we did with our cart buttons here, but we're going to do it for our quantity input. So let's go back to our store.html page, scroll down to our cart. And you'll see we have this cart quantity input class on our input, which we can use to select those elements. So we'll create another variable. We'll call it our quantity inputs, and we'll set it equal to the document dot get elements by class name for that class name. And then we'll just loop over them again, just like we did with the remove cart buttons. 
So I'll copy that and use quantity input instead of our removal buttons. And then in here, we'll set a variable input equal to whichever iteration of the loop that we are on. We'll get that element from the array. So now this is going to be each one of our inputs that we are going to have for our quantity inputs right here. And now all we need to do is take that input. We need to add an event listener. And inside of here, we want to add the event listener change in order to listen to any time the input changes its value. And then we're going to call a function and we'll just call it quantity changed. There we go. And now let's create that function down here. So we have function quantity changed and it'll take that event variable that we talked about earlier. And there we go. Now we can actually code up what we want to do when our quantity is changed. So the first thing we need to do is get that quantity element. So we're just going to get that input here and we're going to set it to event dot target since we know that the target of our event is going to be the actual input element that we need. And then we want to check to see if the value inside of this input is a valid value. So the first thing we want to check for is we want to check for if it's actually a number, because if the person deletes it and clicks off, this is no longer a number. So we can use the function is n a n, which stands for is not a number. And we can pass in our input dot value in here. And this will check to see if our input is a number or if it's not a number. And we also want to make sure that our number is not a negative number. We want to make sure that it is one or higher because we always want people to order at least one of something. You can't order zero or negative one of anything. So we can check to see if it's not a number or if the input value is less than or equal to zero, which means that they either put zero, negative one, negative two, anything less than one inside of here. What we want to do is we want to set our quantity or our input value we want to set it to one since one is the lowest possible number we want somebody to be able to purchase an item of. And then all we need to do after that is update the total inside of our cart. Since we already created this function, we don't actually need to do anything other than call it. And now when we save that, if we increment this value to two, for example, you'll see that our total increases. If we increment it to three, you'll notice our total increases again, four, five, and so on. But you'll also notice that our price here gets a little bit messed up. It has a ton of nines at the end here, and we don't actually want that. This is because in computers, they can't do division or multiplication or addition with floating point numbers, so numbers with decimal points, 100% accurately. So sometimes they get rounding errors where you'll get a bunch of nines or a bunch of zeros and a one saying that it didn't quite round out exactly right. So what we want to do inside of our update cart total function is we always want to round to two decimal places. So in order to do this, we're going to take our total variable here, and we're going to set it equal to our total variable again, but we want to round it. So we'll use the math.round function, which will round to the nearest whole number. But since we want to round to two decimal places, we'll first multiply our total by 100, which will move our two numbers after our decimal place in front of the decimal place. We'll round it, and then we will divide by 100, and this will essentially round our total to the nearest two decimal places. And if we save that, now when we increment this total, our quantity, you'll notice our total never actually goes beyond two decimal places, even if there's a little bit of a rounding error. You'll also notice that if I try to lower this number below one and click off, it'll always change back to one. For example, if I do negative one here, it'll be back to one. If I put in zero, back to one, and even if I completely delete it and click off, it'll change back to one. This is exactly what we want. This means that our users will never be able to order less than one of an item that's in the cart, and if they want to remove it from the cart, all they have to do is click the remove button and it'll be removed for them. Now the next button that we have to hook up is this add to cart button that all of our different cart items have. The first thing we need to do in order to accomplish this is the very same thing that we needed to do for our quantity inputs and our remove cart item buttons. We need to go up, we need to find where this button is. So right here we have shop item button is a class we applied to all of our different add to cart buttons. So down here, we're just gonna create a variable which is our add to cart buttons. We're going to set that variable equal to the document get elements for the class name of the shop item button. And then we're going to do another loop over these objects. So we'll just copy this loop from up here 
We're going to replace quantity inputs with the add to cart buttons. Since we want to loop over these buttons for adding to cart, we're going to get the actual button. So we'll say the button is equal to add to cart buttons of the ith element, since that'll be whichever element of the for loop that we are on. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to add the actual event to the button. So we'll say button dot add event listener. We want to do click again, since we want to do something when we click on the button. And then we need to give it a function name. And we're just going to create a function called add to cart clicked. And there we go. Now let's create that function down here. Say function add to cart clicked. It'll take that event parameter. And then we can do again, create this actual button. So we'll say the button here is going to be equal to event.target. And this is our add to cart button now. So now if we scroll down to a cart, we can see that there is a few elements we need to add to our cart. We need to add an image. We need to add a name of the item, the price of the item, and then the quantity input as well as the removal button. This quantity input is always going to be one and this remove button is always going to be just the remove button. So really all we need to do is get the price, name, and image from our actual item. So if we go back to our HTML here and we find a shop item, we can see that our add to cart button is inside this details div and then our actual shop item is the div right above it. So what we need to do in order to get our shop item is we say shop item, we're gonna set that to our button and we're gonna get the parent of the button and the parent of the button's parent. And that will be this shop item div right here. And from here, we can query the items inside the shop item div to get this shop item title, for example. So if we go back here, we can say that the title is going to equal to the shop item. We're going to get the elements by class name with the class name of shop item title. And again, we just want the very first one and we want the text inside of that. So we'll use inner text. And if we do a console.log here of the title, save that and we click add to cart, you'll see we get coffee cup for the coffee cup, we get t-shirt when we click the t-shirt button and so on for all of our different buttons. So now what we wanna do is we wanna get the price next. If we look here, we have the shop item price class, which we can query on. So we can say that the price is going to be equal to shop item dot get elements by class for the shop item price class. Again, get the first element and get the text inside of it. And now if we log the price and the title, you'll see that the coffee cup is $6.99, this t-shirt $19.99, and so on. Now the very last thing we need to do is we need to get our image element. And all we wanna do is get the source of our image. So inside of our store here, we see that our image has the class shop item image. So if we do the very same thing again, we can say that the image source is going to be equal to shop item, get the elements with the class name, shop item image, get the very first one. And instead of the text inside of this image, since images don't have text, we wanna get the source attribute. And this attribute is going to be the source that we apply to our different image. So now if we print this out here, we say image source, click the add to cart button, you'll see that we get the URL that goes towards the source of our image, which is exactly what we want. And it's going to be different for all of our different images, as you can see. So now what we need to do is we need to actually add a row to our cart down here. And this is going to be the most complex part of what we're going to do. So I'm gonna create a separate method to do this. And we'll call this the add item to cart method. And we're gonna pass in the title, the price, and the image source into this function. And let's just create this function down here. add item to cart, and it's going to take the parameters title, price, and image source, just like that. And now what we need to do is we need to create a row for our cart item. In order to create this cart row, we'll just create a variable called cart row, and we need to set it to a new element. So we're gonna use document.create element, which allows us to create an element of any type that we want. So for example, we just wanna create a div so if we run this document.create element, it's going to create a brand new div. And it's not gonna add it to our HTML yet, but we have a div that we can now later add to our HTML. And we wanna add it to our cart items. As you can see here, we scroll down, we have a cart items, which is where all of our cart rows are going to be. So we wanna add that to our cart items. So we're gonna find the cart items, which is going to be equal to the document 
we're going to get elements by class name for cart items and we're just going to get the very first one and then we're just going to use the append method for this cart items so we say append which is going to add this cart row to the very end of our cart items so we can just say cart row here and now this append method will append our cart row to the end of our cart items which is exactly what we want. It's just going to add an empty div though for now. So if we click this add to cart button, we're just adding empty divs which have nothing in them. But if we wanted to add something into these divs just to see what it looks like, we can say cart row dot inner text equals title. And now when we click this add to cart button, you'll see we added coffee cup here. If we click the t-shirt one, we added a row of t-shirt and so on. And now all we need to do is do the actual styling, add the image and add the price, etc. So we get our cart row looking exactly like our other cart rows. And the easiest way for us to do that is to just take the HTML directly from our store page here. So we'll just copy everything that's inside of our cart row. And we're going to actually use that HTML to generate a cart row. So we'll just say that our cart row contents variable, we're going to set it equal to a string, but we're going to use back ticks around the string instead of quotation marks so that we can use our string on multiple different lines. So now if we paste this in here, fix our spacing real quick. There we go. You'll see that we have all of the different HTML that we need to create our cart contents. So now instead of setting the title here, what we want to do is we want to set the cart row dot inner HTML we're going to set it to our cart row contents. And the reason we use inner HTML is because we're actually using HTML tags inside of this instead of just text. And now if we save this, click add to cart. You see that we added a new item to our cart, which is perfect. But you'll notice that it's actually not styled just like this. And that's because we need to add the class of cart row to our cart row here. So we can just say cart row dot class list dot add and we'll just add the class of cart row, save that. And now when we click add to cart, you'll notice it adds something to the cart, but you'll notice it always adds the t-shirt item. And that's because we're not using the variables we pass into this function. Since we use back ticks here, we can actually just put variables directly into our code. So for example, our image URL, if we put a dollar sign and then a curly bracket, anything inside of that is going to be a variable that we'll evaluate. So we'll say image source, so now it'll take our image source variable and put it right here inside of this HTML. We can do the same thing for the title down here. So we'll say title. And then lastly, we can do the same thing for our price right here. And now if we save that, we click add to cart, you'll see that it now adds all these elements correctly to the cart like we want to. We click add to cart again. You'll notice it actually adds two coffee cups to our cart, which we don't want to do. So what we want to do is we want to make a check to check to see if we already have the coffee cup inside of our cart before adding it to our cart. In order to do that, we're going to get all the names of our cart items from our cart. So we'll just say cart item names. We're going to set that equal to cart items dot get elements by class name. And if we check to see what our class name is in here, we'll notice that it is cart item title right here will be the name of our cart item. So we can just get by a cart item title and then we can loop through all these different cart items. So we'll say, while I starts at zero, I is less than cart items length. And then we add one to I every time we go through the loop. And then we can just say that our cart item names. So we'll check if cart item names, we wanna get the ith element for whatever iteration we're on. We want to check the inner text because the inner text will either be t-shirt in this example or album three, it depends on whatever row we're on. And we want to check is the text inside of that cart row equal to the title that we passed in right here. And if it's equal to the title, that means that we've already added that item to our cart. So we want to just alert the user with the alert function and the alert function will pop up a pop-up for the user telling them that something has happened and they can click okay to dismiss the pop-up. So we'll just say that this item is already added to the cart. There we go. 
And then we also want to return from our function since we no longer want to execute the code below this for loop. And calling return will immediately exit you out of the function and stop executing anything below it. So calling return here will bring us back to where we called that item item to cart function. So now if we save that, we add a coffee cup, you'll see it adds it perfectly down here. And if we try to add another coffee cup, we're gonna get a message saying that the item has already been added to the cart. And you'll notice it does not add another one to the cart, which is perfect. You will notice, however, that our total down here is not being updated. So in our add to cart clicked button event right here, we'll just put our update cart total function right there. And now when we add a coffee cup, you'll notice that our total updates correspondingly with our coffee cup item. One thing that you will realize though, is if we go to use the remove button on our newly added item, you'll notice our remove button does not work. And you'll think, why does that not work? We added all of our event listener up here when our document loaded. But we only added these event listeners as soon as our document loaded. And this remove button was not here when the document loaded. This was added after we loaded the document. So we need to add an event listener to this remove button. So inside of our function here, after we add our contents to the document, we're going to select them. So we'll say cart row. We're going to get the elements by class name, and we're going to do it for the button danger, which is our remove button. We want to get the very first one, and we'll add an event listener here for click, just like we did above when the document was loaded, and we'll use our function for removing a cart item. Now, if you save that, if we add this coffee cup, and then we click the remove button, you'll now notice that remove button works. We now need to do the same thing for our quantity, since as you can see, our quantity input does not work, it does not update the total. So we'll just do the exact same thing with the cart row, we'll get elements by class name, and in this case, it's the cart quantity input. Get the very first one here, add the event listener, and this time the event listener is a change event listener, instead of the click. And we'll just use our quantity changed function. And now, when we added something to the cart, these two lines will be run, which add our event listeners to our new quantity input and our new remove input. So now when we update our quantity input, our total will update and our remove button will now remove the item from our cart. This is exactly what we need, but what we should do is remove these elements from our HTML since we don't want our cart to already have items in it as soon as the page loads. So we'll go into our store here and remove all of our cart rows inside of our cart items. Now, if we save that, you'll see that our cart is completely empty. Oh, we should update our price here as well to start at $0. And now you'll see that our cart is completely empty when our page loads and we can add items to our cart, increase the quantity of those items, maybe add a different item to the cart. And you'll see that this adds up perfectly. Total right here is perfect. We can remove things as we need to remove back to zero whatever we need. Now the very last thing we have to do is to make the purchase button actually remove all the items from our cart. So let's start to do that now. Inside of our ready function here, we're going to do the exact same thing we've done for all of our other buttons. And we're going to add an event listener. So let's check what class we need to query on. We want to look for this button purchase class. And that is the class that we applied to our button. So in here, we're going to do document.getElementsByClassName. We're going to use that class name of button purchase. There's only one button for purchasing on our entire page. So we just want to get the first one and we're going to add the event listener to this. It's going to be a click event listener and we're going to make a function and we'll just call it purchase clicked just like that. And down here you can add that function purchase clicked. There we go. And all we want to do inside of this function is alert the user that they have purchased these items. So we'll create an alert. And inside of this alert, we'll just say, thank you for your purchase. This will just notify them that they have purchased these items. And then we will go down here and we will delete all the items inside of our cart. So in order to do this, what we want to do is we want to select the container our cart items are in, which is this cart items class right here. We know that all of our cart rows are going to be added to this. So we'll say cart items as a variable is going to be equal to the document. We're going to get all the elements by class name of cart items. We know there's only one, so we're just going to get the first one. And then we're going to want to loop over all the children inside of the cart. 
So if we add a bunch of things to the cart, you see that we're gonna have multiple cart rows in here. So we wanna check for all the children inside of this cart items. So we'll say while, which is similar to a for loop, but it'll continue to execute as long as whatever is inside the parentheses here is true. So we'll say while our cart items has children, so has child node, which essentially means, is there any children inside of this cart item? If that is true, we're going to take the cart item, we're going to remove the child, and we're just going to remove whatever the very first child inside of cart items is, and we can use the first child property to get that. So this while loop will continually loop through all of the I rows in our cart items and remove them from our cart items until our cart items is completely empty. So let's test this out. Let's add some things to our cart here. We'll increase the quantity here. So we have $67 worth of purchases to make. If we click purchase, it'll say thank you for your purchase. And when we click OK, you'll see everything in our cart is removed, but our total still hasn't been updated. So again, we're just going to call our update cart total function at the end of here. And now if we add some things to our cart, look at our total, 2698 purchase. After we click OK, our total goes back to zero. And that's all there is to creating the JavaScript for this page. It may seem like a lot of code, we have a lot of lines in here, but a lot of this is just doing the same thing over and over again. As you can see, we have get elements by class name being called all the time to get the elements that we want to apply our events to, as well as to get the elements that we want to get the text from in order to create our rows or remove our rows. Really, the main takeaways from here is up here we have the code that is going to check to make sure that our document is loaded before we try to access the different parts of it, this is incredibly important to have in every single bit of JavaScript that you work on. Then next, we set up all of our event listeners for all of the items that are already loaded into our document at the very beginning of our document load. Then we have our different events that are going to do different things such as add elements to the cart, remove elements from the cart, update the quantity, and so on. And then lastly, when we add new elements to our document, we need to make sure to hook up all of our event listeners to those documents elements because they weren't around when we set up our initial events up here in our ready function because they were added after this ready function was called. This is a very important step to add these event listeners that is commonly forgotten when creating new elements in JavaScript. Other than that though, there really isn't much complicated code in this project and really not much JavaScript specific code. All we're really doing is getting the different elements and then pasting those elements inside of our cart and then removing them with this purchase button or the remove button. So now if I make this a little bit larger here, remove this console down here, you can see we can add our different items to our cart, change our quantity as high as we want. If we try to make it a negative number, it'll just change it back to one. Maybe we don't want a coffee cup, remove it. And then when we're done, purchase our items, and there we go. This is everything that we need in order to create the fully functioning cart on our band website. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something about the JavaScript that you need to use in order to create this cart from just plain vanilla JavaScript. And if you guys want to see the code that I have for either the actual band web pages or the cart itself, go over to my GitHub, which is linked in the description below for all of the code that we worked on in this lesson. Thank you guys very much for sitting through this extremely long video on JavaScript. If you guys enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe if you want to see similar content. And let me know down in the comments below what you want me to cover more in depth related to JavaScript in the future. Thank you guys very much. Have a good day.